We know that loosely coupled systems and high cohesive are a good thing. How can we refactor source code to have exactly that? That is exactly what I will show you in this video, where we will refactor source code to have a system that is cohesive and loosely coupled. Coupling is one of the concepts that I talk on my new clean code course, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's see how we can refactor this source code to have low coupling and high cohesion. But first, let me explain you what we have here. So we have a simple application, all the source code in a single file so you can see everything. And here you can see that we are creating an application and on that application we have a method, the register client, that will create the client somewhere, I think. And then we have only two classes, one that is the application, that is right here, and another one that is the client registry. And let's see how those work. So the application is the one that we are working from the outside of our application. So we are calling this method the register client. The register client will create a registry that then is getting the, an ID that is being generated and also is providing to another method to create a client code. So what we know so far is that on the client registry, we have a simple class with mainly two helper methods, let's say. Okay, one to generate IDs and another one to generate the client code. Looks like it's a public version of the code of our client. And also we can see that this source code is checking based on membership, which discount we should assign to a given client. And also we can see that we are printing the results to the console. So one thing we already know is that this code is doing too many things. Okay, we can see here as an example, this class that has too many responsibilities. We are creating IDs, we are checking the discounts, we are printing, we are doing a lot of stuff in a single place. So that is impacting our cohesion, but also we can see here a problem of coupling. Why? This client registry provides two methods and one of them is returning the client ID and then I need to use that one to call the second method, the generate client code. That means that I need to know the order of invocation in order to use this properly. So we have coupling here, but also it means that if I change anything inside of that client registry, I might need to change this registered client inside of my application. So let's see how we can refactor this source code to improve it and take it to high cohesion and loosely coupled. And by the way, you can grab this source code as a patron. So when I'm facing something like this and I'm trying to look for cohesion and coupling, the first thing that I try to do is trying to find clusters of information. So what does that mean? It means trying to understand inside of our source code different concepts that we have so we can group things together. As an example, if we look into our application, we already know that we have a concept of a client and it should be somewhere here. And it's quite clear because we have things like the ID, the code. So it looks like we have this concept of a client. We create instances of clients. But also, to me, it looks like that by looking into these if statements, that we have a concept of membership as well. So this looks like another cluster of information. It even looks like that there's something missing here because we are doing something really bad here and ugly that is checking this membership against some magic strings and ideally we, we could model this in a different way. So that will be my first step by introducing two new concepts inside of this source code. And let's do exactly that. So I will create a new class and let's call it client. And what we know that the client has already, we already know that it has a quid, that is our ID. We also know that it has a, a code, a name. And when we create client, we are also adding a country for that client. So this looks like our first cluster of information. And then we have the membership as well. So class membership. And on that one, what we know that we have, we have the name of the membership, we could call it code, maybe. And also we have the discount that, that is assigned to that membership. So let's name it something like the code and create another property for the discount. Now that I have the membership, there's one thing missing on the client that is the membership level of that client. But before that, since we are talking about simple and maintainable code, let me tell you that I have a new course available at DomeTrain. In this course, we'll start with the code base with a lot of problems. And then we will refactor that code base to improve it. And all of that while we learn the principles of clean code. If you are ready to start this journey, 
go to domtrain.com and use the promo code CLEANGI to save 50%. So let's create a property. I will name it membership level. Okay, and we want to use these two classes. But first, let's look into our source code. And here we can see that we have that coupling problem with the client registry. And as you can see, the client ID and client code are related to that new class that we created. One thing that we can do here to improve is that since currently my class needs to know that I have a given order of invocation, so I need to first generate the ID to then generate the code, and only then I will be able to create the client. So I think it makes sense to go to our client registry and have a method there that offers the functionality of creating new client. So let's do exactly that. If we go to our client registry, we can have another method that will return a client, and let's call it create client. It will act as kind of like a factory of clients. So now that I have this here, it means that I can simply return a new client and I will need the name, I will need the country, I'd set it to the method as parameter, but also I need the ID. Now I can call the other method, the client ID, so generate client ID. And I also need the code that I can also do it calling the method that I have right here. So I can call the generate client code this time I will need the ID. So I first need to assign this to a variable and now I can assign it to the property and call the method. And there, let's now provide the country. And the only thing that is missing here is the membership level. Now let's assign it to null because I want to use the create client first. So let's go into our application and now we can refactor some things. Instead of calling those two methods, now what we can do is that we can say that for our client, is equal to the registry create client with the name and the country. So now those two can go away. And when we are printing, we can say that we are printing the client ID and the client code. So now let's address that membership thing that we have there. I will need to receive here, obviously the membership, but now I want the real membership class and I don't have memberships yet. So I need a way to have a list of the types of memberships that, that I have. So I can create exactly that inside of my client registry. Before I go there, before I forget that, I will just convert those two methods that we abstracted by the create client into private methods, because now I don't need to expose them to the outside. So regarding memberships, we can now have here a private read-only dictionary that will have a string and the membership will be my memberships dictionary. If I have this, now it means that when I'm creating a new client, I can always go to my memberships and get the membership by the membership name that I'm receiving. Obviously, ideally, I would be a bit more defensive. This is just for demo purposes. But now we have a problem that is we don't have memberships. So for now, I think what we can do is to simply go here and in our constructor, we'll define the membership levels that we have. So, so I will create a class that will help me here that will return a membership and I will call it create membership and the membership as a code and a discount. So this will simplify my definition of membership. So now I can say that I want to add and we'll move all those into there. So let me just copy it nearby so it will be easier for me. So I want the silver with 2% discount. You want the gold 4% and platinum with 10%. So now with that data structure, I can avoid these if statements that are here because I model that membership discount relationship through my classes. The only thing that I need to do here is that since I'm calculating the discount for a client when it's being registered, it's a good idea to have a property in our client that will have the discount calculated at the time. Otherwise, if we change discounts from a given membership, it might change and it might not be what we are looking for. So I have mainly two options that I will show you, but before let's remove this and on our client, let's provide the membership name so we can calculate. What will we do on our client? We can either have something here that will be something like a calculate discount and we can provide it through the membership level dot discount. It's one option. Another option is that when we create it, we assign it directly into a property. And that is the one that I will do. So I will say that discount for the client is a property. So when I create a new client on my client registry, what I will do is that I will move the membership level into here. And now the discount will be equal to 
membership level dot discount. So this means that now I can make my code compile and here when I have my client discount, can name it client dot discount. Looks good. But when we look into our register client method, we still can find here that we have not only the create client, but also we have this printing of the create client registration. And even there, we have two things. We have information regarding our client that you can see that now we can get all of that through our client, but also we have information about the membership and we can also move this to the place where the data lives on. So what we could do here is to create basically two print methods, one in our client and another one in our membership. The technique that I will use is slightly different. I will use the two string as a way to implement this. So then by the end, when I go here, I simply need to say, I want to print my client. So let's see how we can do that. So on my client, I will override the to string and here I will print the ID, the code and so on. Now I don't need this client dot because I'm inside of the client. So this is the information about the client. But what I can also do is to print the information about the membership. So what I can do here is to add another line called my membership level. So this will call the toString string of the membership. So there, let's do kind of the same thing. We override the toString string and we print our properties there. So this means that now I can go into my place where I'm printing this to the console and I throw away all of this and I simply call the client. And now if I run my application, I can see here that it is printing everything. But we still have things to do here. Another example, we have here once again coupling. We have this application coupled to print to the console. We don't want that, okay? So what we can do here in this case is either receiving a um, a printer, let's say, through our application using a version of control, or we can, in this case, simply return something to the outside like the client. So we can return directly from the register create client. And this way, what we do when we are using our application, we save our client and we can print there. Because this way, this code can easily be used by different UIs. Okay, if I want to do something like an API or a web application, I can use the same code because it's not locked, it's not coupled to the console. But we still have coupling in place. Let's see. Our client and membership, we have rearranged everything. But in our client registry, we took some steps. But even then, I have one problem here. That is, my client registry has this information of the membership. So it's static. I, I can change it. And since my application creates an instance of client registry here, I'm locked in. If I want to swap, if I want the flexibility and I want to, for example, load memberships from a database, from a CSV, from somewhere else, I can do it. I don't have an easy way to, to do it this way. So what can we do to avoid something like this? It will start by understanding that managing memberships here, we are reducing the cohesion of this class, okay? Because now the class has multiple responsibilities, as the responsibility of maintaining a list of memberships and as the re responsibility of creating a registry of clients. So what we do in this case is that we'll move this another responsibility into a different place of our application because we are striving for cohesion by feature. So what we'll do is quickly create another class and you can even call it membership registry to have names aligned. And then we'll copy there this. So now the membership registry is being managed here, but in our client registry, we still need memberships. So what we need is that our membership registry to expose a method that can give me the membership based on the name. So let's do that. We'll have a public, returns a membership, and for now let's return it right away. So this means that now my client registry can use the membership registry. So private read only, okay? And now where I was accessing the dictionary directly, now I can use get membership. So this way I segregate the responsibilities, but even then I have the coupling. I have the coupling that my application depends on the client registry and the client registry is coupled to the membership registry. And in this case, it is a problem because I can see that I will need to maintain this list of uh, memberships. And it's quite likely that eventually I might want to swap this in-memory implementation of the catalog of memberships by something that comes from somewhere like a CSV or a database or something else. That means 
that I need to take a step further. So what I can do is that I can go to my membership registry and I can extract an interface that will have our get method. Now that I have the interface, what I can do is that I will break that coupling between those two, between the client registry and the implementation of an in-memory database of the memberships. And this way I can use the interface and I can receive it through a constructor. So this means that when I'm creating my client registry, now I can decide where I want to get memberships from. So one common good practice is to get it through the constructor. So we can move the registry to a private field. And in the constructor, we can create it. And now we'll provide the I membership registry. So this means that when we are using our application, we now can decide if I want to use this in memory membership registry or if I want to use one that goes to a CSV, an Excel file or even a database. So as you can see, now we might have more functions, that is true, but what we have is code that is easier to maintain because we understood the clusters of information. We create those two classes, the client, the membership. Now we can keep evolving those and adding methods on top of it if needed, but also we break that coupling that we had between that registry, the memberships, and also by our main application with the registry itself. And even having more methods, you can see that they now are quite simple. They usually have one, two, three lines of code. They don't have more than that. And this simplifies a lot the maintainability of our source code. It's a huge improvement. Simple things like swapping the registry, it will be easier, or something as simple as going here and I have a new membership level will be as simple as creating a new line of code so far while this thing is in memory instead of having multiple if statements and logic spread across multiple places. And if you feel that it's still not clear why it's so important coupling and cohesion, you might want to check this video right here where I explain you everything about why we strive for a loosely coupled system and a high cohesive system and what can we do to simplify it.